Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we're going to break into something today that I think is really cool, really exciting, and I think it can benefit almost anybody in iRacing, um, especially if you're using a single monitor, a multiple monitor, or don't want to make the jump to VR. What am I talking about? I'm talking about head tracking. Let's jump in. Let's see what this is about. Okay, so as we can see here, I've got triple monitors set up, but this works for single monitors as well. Um, the one big thing that you need to make sure that you do is you need to have this camera that we're going to use for this centered over the center of the monitor. Um, make sure it's in line with your wheelbase, and then that way you get the best in line as you can get so we can get this thing rolling. Okay, so now that we've got the basic of what you're going to need to make this all work, um, which I'm just using a basic Logitech uh, 920 camera um, so it doesn't have to be anything fancy it doesn't have to be this this Logitech 4k Brio um, you're actually probably better off with a 1080p camera um, but these are the two pieces of software that that you're going to need to have to be able to do this um, now obviously I've already got this installed here on my sh my machine um, but if you go over to github um, and I will place both these links in the description down below. Um, you can download them both off of GitHub. They have Discord servers for both of them. Um, but you will need both pieces of software um, to be able to make this work. Um, the one is OpenTrack. The other one is AI Track. Um, I'm going to show you here how these are going to work. There is some slight configuration with these uh, to make everything work. Um, but again, it's not, not overly complicated. Um, so don't be afraid to try this and, and, you know, build it out exactly the way that I'm going to show you how to build it. Um, so that way it, it works the way that you want it to makes the most sense. Um, and, uh, you know, performs the way that we hope. So what we're going to do here. So the first one we're going to mess with is the AI track. Here on the left um, and we're going to once it's installed the one thing that you're gonna want to do after you get it open the first time is make sure you come down here right click and pin it to your taskbar uh, it's kind of an exe that it doesn't when it installs it doesn't show up in your start menu um, so just save yourself the headache once you get it open for the first time pin it to that taskbar um, and then you're good to go there. Um, the next thing that we need to do is I have set this up so these two can talk because you've got to make sure that they're they're talking to each other. Uh, you're going to use remote open track client. So you'll check that box. Set your IP settings and your port settings the same as I have here. Uh, so that 127.0.0.1 um, port 4242. Um, all that that IP is saying is, hey, look at the, the local host or the, the computer that you're obviously installing it on, which is the one you're going to run iRacing on. Um, that's all those numbers mean. Nothing super fancy. Um, I could get into the technical jargon, but it, I'd probably bore you with it. Um, <laughs> uh, but anyways, other than that, you'll go ahead, you'll just click apply. Um, and that'll apply the settings over on the AI track. So very simple there. Um... The next setup is for uh, Open Track, which is the part that interfaces between AI Track and iRacing. Um, so for this, we're going to set it to on the input UDP over network. Uh, and you'll click the little hammer. You'll set your port um, to 4242, which is what we set in the other one. Um, and then the other thing that we're going to do. And actually, I'm going to get to that here in just a second, but make sure your outputs and everything look exactly the same as this on the left. Okay, now we'll go into options. Um, one thing that you will want to do, make sure you set a center key on, on your keyboard or on your wheel or however you want to do it. This is so that way, once you jump in, you get set in the car, and I'll, I'll show you this. Um it's not going to be perfect. So you want to bring it to center of what feels natural when you're, you're sitting in your rig arms at your wheel. Um, you'll click that. 
centering button and then it'll make it to where it centers everything up and then it'll track off your head and everything. Um, so make sure that you, you get that set up. Um, I highly recommend that. Um, output, I run with just the left right um, and we'll get into that and I'll, I'll show you once we get in the car kind of why I do that. Um, for anybody that gets motion sickness, I highly, highly suggest disabling everything but the yaw. Um, to me, and I'm not a person that gets motion sickness, um, but with the pitch and the roll on, it it really kind of messes with you. So until you get things down and figure out what you want to do or if you want to try the pitch and the roll, um, you might just try leaving the yaw on so it just tracks your head left, right. Um, but you can leave those enabled. One thing to note is you will have to, if you turn pitch on, make sure that that is inverted. Um, otherwise, when you look up, it'll look down. When you look down, it'll look up and you'll be swearing at it for hours. Um, so make sure you, that you have, uh, you know, that, that pitch inverted. Um, other than that, I don't have anything else, uh, you know, as far as settings. But once you get this part done, everything should start working at that point. Uh, be mindful if things aren't working properly, try closing open track and then start tracking with uh, AI track, then go and open um, open track. So you'll have to start start AI track first, then start open track. But as you can see with the AI track, and I tried this originally with just open track, but I noticed that it wasn't smooth. It 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 would get really jerky um, with open track. Um, so uh, by good suggestion of my friend John, he said, "Hey." Let's, let's install AI track and then have it interface together. And as you can see, it traces my face out. So it's it's seeing my eyeballs, it's seeing my face, it knows where it is if I'm moving left to right. It works very, very smoothly. Um, and then after that, you start open track and there won't be video, but as you can see by the numbers, it's picking up everything. It picks up my head roll. It picks up my movement back and forth, which with Z, you, I, I don't turn that on because the Z axis, when you do this, it's going to bring your screens into you basically. And it's very, very weird. Um, it's not a natural feeling. So keep that in mind as well. So um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and get everything set up. And we'll come back and we'll be in the car. Um, I'll have some video of behind me as well so you can see what that looks like from the outside um, as well as what we're seeing on screen all at the same time. So give me just a second here. We're going to go ahead and, and set everything up. Okay. So at this point, we're in our test session. Um, I've just picked the 296 Ferrari at Le Mans. It's got enough corners. It, it should show exactly what we want to see. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, we're going to jump in the car. I'm going to show you why this centering key is so important. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's click into the car. Um, so we're we're in the car, but if you notice, my, uh, my stuff is not centered. So, you know, as you can see, I'm, I'm looking at the screen, but Race Labs is off to the right. So what we're going to do... We're going to look natural again. We're just going to recenter that. So now it's centered. Um, but now that we're in the car, as you can see, if I turn left or turn right, we have all this view that we can use. Now, as you can see in the behind view, the, all three screens for me are moving. I, I know you can't see it in the main section, but we have just that, that front screen that, that appears to be moving. So, and there is some, a little bit of drift to it, which, you know, like I said, it's, it's face tracking. It's a little difficult, but let's go ahead and get out on track. We're going to, I'm going to show you how this kind of works here. Um, and like I said, this does take 
some getting used to. Um, but it's so handy. Especially for people that want to be able to look at their apex, right? Because it's, it's a natural thing to do. Um, because I, I am constantly, as, as an off-road racer, I'm constantly looking at that next apex, right? Because that's what you're aiming for. But it makes it very easy to follow, um, and then you kind of know where you're, you're at instead of being stuck to the confines of your screen, right? Um... To me, this offers the best flexibility, in my opinion. Um, because, like I said, I'm not a VR guy. Uh, I don't like the heat. I don't like the weight. Um, you know, it just it doesn't feel normal to me. Um, so, to be able to get head tracking working, it seems to make the most sense for me. Um, I don't run this all the time. I do. I don't run it on ovals, um, but it is something that, if you wanted to, you could run it on an oval. I don't really see the benefit. Um, and I notice we're we're still kind of off on the head tracking, but um, I'm gonna get to the end of the mole sand here, and I will show you guys. We'll turn on pitch and roll and everything, and I'll I'll show you guys what that looks like. So I will be back in just a second. Okay, so we're at the end of the mole sand here. I've went ahead and enabled pitch and roll, and as you can see, we're already pitching, we're rolling, and it, it looks like normal movement, right? Um, so let's go ahead, we're gonna get moving again, and if you stick things in front of your face, do things with your arm, you can see it kind of does some weird things. This is the reason that I don't care for the pitch and the roll. Um, but if I look up, I can see there's that up there. If I look down, we can see the steering wheel and everything. Um, and this this might be fine for some people. It gives you more of that VR feel. Um, to give you an idea, I am running about 125 frames, which is pretty normal to what I usually run around here with, with this setup. Um, even without... The, the head tracking turned on so but you still have that that access to the left and the right you can still look that way I can twist my head as I go around the corner if I want to but to me with the the up and down movement and the left right it it just sometimes it feels like it's too much for my eyes to take in if that makes sense um, and if you wind up flipping the car, I, I honestly don't know how that's going to react because I haven't tried it yet. Um, it may cause things to go real loopy. But the, the fact that you can, like I said, stare at that, that apex ahead of time before you get there... To me, that's that's super beneficial, just because of the fact that you're you're looking exactly where you want to be instead of trying to see around something that you can't. If that makes sense. Um, and there is some adjustment to like how far your head turns, how far the the screen is going to move. So keep that in mind as well. Um, and I'm, there's still things that I'm still working on with this and, and tweaking. Um, but it is kind of cool. You can look down and you can see the floorboards. Although I don't have any legs. I don't know why we don't have legs. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's the, uh, the whole nutshell of um, getting this working. One thing that I will show you, uh, just so we can bring this up and everybody is aware... Uh, as I was talking at the start about the um, pitch being inverted. So if I look down, it looks up. And if I look up, it looks down. Um, so that's that's one thing that you're going to want to want to use um, just to make sure that you don't 
cause yourself any undue stress before you get this work and see now we're we're back to working as normal um and then i've got that hot key set up so we're looking as normal as we can we just recenter um and like i said it does drift i need to move that hot key to my wheel um just to make life a little bit simpler here so that there is head tracking um 101 um like i said i think it's really beneficial for road course racing um i think it, it'll help a lot of people out uh give it a try see what you think um let me know in the comments uh i'm i'm very curious to see what your guys's thoughts on it is um if it's something that you've tried before didn't care for it why um and if you're just trying it for the first time let me know what you think see if it's see if it's helped a little bit um I'm always interested to hear what, what you guys think as far as the tech side of things. Um, I'm going to try and keep a lot of these videos going uh, because I, I really think that I'm, I'm trying to make a difference and, and give people information that they can use on a regular basis uh, just because there's not a lot of it out there. So um, on that note, guys, we'll catch you on the next one and uh, hope you enjoyed the video.